Few companies have done so much. The Gujarat Cooperative Milk Marketing Federation, known widely by its brand name Amul, has empowered millions of farmers, created one of India's most loved brands, and transformed the industry that it has led for over 70 years. Owned by 3.1 million farmers, Amul's success stems from a crystal clear vision and a mission laid out by its founders, Tribhuvan Das Patel, the founding chairman of the organization, and the legendary Vargis Kurian, starting way back in 1949. After the success of Amul, Kurian went on to lead the White Revolution, recreating what Amul had done successfully with farmers across India. Mrs. Odi, it's such a pleasure to have you with us on the Shapers of Enterprise, uh, because not only is India celebrating 75 years, Amul is also celebrating 75 years. And I've had the pleasure of spending some time with you at Anand. But um, I'm going to start uh, by looking at Amul uh, from a personal standpoint, that is your personal standpoint, because I remember you telling me that you were the first batch of Irma students uh, and you were the first batch to join uh, Amul. And that was what, 40 years ago? What a sea change there must have been in Amul from the time you joined. Can you take us through that journey? First? Well, uh, 40 years back when same March 1982, I joined immediately after passing out of Irma. In my wildest dream, I would have never thought that after 40 years, Amul will be what it is today. I'll just give you a number. When I joined Amul, our turnover that time was 121 crore. And this year, Amul brand turnover will be 61,000 crore. We were collecting that time 1.2 million liters of milk per day. And today we are collecting 30 million liters of milk. And uh, that time only we had three or four products, butter, cheese, baby food, and a little bit of our chocolates. But now you see, I mean, there are more than 60 products are there and around 1,000 SQ are there. We had only six plants, dairy plants that time. Today we have 90 plants. I mean, through my eyes, I have seen how Amul has grown from, I mean, what a very small company vis-a-vis -vis compared to any other food company or FMC or in FMC or in a multinational that time. But today Amul is India's biggest food or FMCG company. I mean, nobody had thought of it. And more than, Miniji, more than important thing which I tell you, you said 75 years old brand or the company. I mean, if you count on the fingertips, there are very few brands or company which are existing even after 75 years. And not only existing, the growth rate of decade growth rate is higher than the previous decade. And also, I mean, I don't know, you talk to your mother, you talk to you, your kids, everybody will be having different brands experience. Like in my time, there used to be Dalda ghee, there used to be Afghan snow cream, there used to be uh, Philips uh, radio or uh, Ambassador car. All these brands you know where are. I mean, people are, but it is an Amul brand, butter, which was there six years back also, two days got the same image, third generation we Absolutely. Absolutely. That is one of the reasons that I was so keen to get Amul on the shapers of Indian enterprise, because I think there are few companies and I've covered so many companies, as you know, Mrs. Sodi, and I think my, uh, you know, journey of discovering Amul and the story of Amul was something that left a lasting impression on my mind for two other reasons. Uh, the first is that it is a company owned by 3.6 million farmers. And the second is that for 75 years, it has innovated and stayed ahead of competition and its primary con competition has been itself. So it's always aimed at bettering itself. So it's, it's a wonderful company in that context. And you know, it also shows us how much uh, we can learn from this one experiment that can be replicated because 
it was the Amul success that created the white revolution in India. Yeah. It created Irma, in fact, the Institute of Rural Management. It is an institution builder in its own right. But I'm yeah. going to step back because you worked very closely with Mr. Kurian, who kind of put, the, put shape to this mission and vision. And it was uh, both idealism as well as very practical um, execution that created the Amul magic. So I'm going to start by asking you, to your mind, what are the four or five, you know, pillars on which you think Amul has kind of been built? Well, I think, uh, Miniji, if I have to describe the reason of success of Amul, what it is today, even after 75 years, the first, I think, in one word I can tell you, consistency. Consistency in our business objectives or business structure. Consistency in our product recipes. Consistency in communication or advertising. And consistency in HR practice. Let me give you, start with this uh, consistency in business structure of goals. See, what is the business goal objective which has been given to me or anybody in this organization? Value for many and value for money. Value for many means 3.6 million farmers who own Amul. They need to be provided every day, day after day, very stable and remunerative price for their produce, which is in this case milk, so that they're encouraged to continue in dairy, continue to invest. And value for money means providing tastiest product using best processing of technology machinery, best packaging, but at affordable prices. So that whatever milk is offered by our 3.6 million farmers, we are able to buy it, we are able to procure, process, and market it. I think that is the reason where why Amul is successful. We, I mean, you can also it means give more to earn more, give more to your farmers or suppliers, give more to your consumer. Once they feel happy, your business will grow. I think that is the reason. Because of this reason, give more to one more. Our business is growing day after day after. And we are able to compete with best of the Indian and multinational company in whatever sector we are. And we are having the market leadership. The other reason for Amul success is, you see, Amul is what? Is a food. We are in food business. And food means taste. Consumer will not compromise on one thing which is ever is taste. They may talk everything, but taste. So we have never changed a recipe of any of our food products, butter, lije, cheese, or ice cream, just to save some reduced cost of production. I mean, generally what happens, any product is successful, the task given to the management is reduced cost of production. So we have never tried to replace expensive fat in ice creams or in our baby food or milk powder with the cheap or synthetic uh, fat like palm oil and oil or vanaspati. And that is the reason what butter you eat today, he has got same recipe 56 years back or 60 years. The other very important, which has been very really appreciated right from day one is, we understood, Dr. Vargas Kuni has told us, importance of brand building or communication. We started advertising Amul brand in the 50s. Hmm. But let me tell you, our spend is less than 1% of our annual sales. But whatever branding or positioning which we have taken, we continue. I mean, 56 years back, utterly, butterly delicious, our butter topical campaign, we are continuing. In 90s, the taste of India is continuing. In 2000, we started Amul Dud Pita India. So basically, with minimum of branding budget, and using umbrella brand, but consistent in communication is we are able to make our brand top of the mind. I mean, if I go anywhere and I say I'm from Amul, the first recall people talk about is, is Sodiji, your Amul butter topical campaign is excellent. Do you give me any example where a call is on the campaign, not on the product? If I tell you Maruti immediately your mind, car will come. 
or iPhone, the phone will come. But here, when I say Amul means campaign comes. So that is the uh, advantage of consistent communication. And uh, fourth is very important is the consistency in our HR manpower. I mean, most of my team members, senior, they all are on first job. I am for 40 years. So in my other colleague, 30 years, 32 years, all are on their first job. You see, one other reason for success of Amul, that is excellence or innovation. Because Dr. Varghese Kuru from day one has been saying, being a cooperative of farmers, it does not mean you'll be conservative. You have to ahead of technology and innovation than anybody else. So whether our milk procurement systems or transportation or processing or logistic or IT, I mean, our C2C value chain, which we call cow to consumer, is fully integrated through SAP and other ERPs. I mean, what each cow is linked with the each retailer. I mean, that is the linkage we have got. So I think innovation has really helped us to keep us ahead of other. And also digital technology, whatever is now, now today, you can't do business without uh, innovation in digital, digitally connected. So I think these are the main reasons why, in spite of best of the competitor world are coming into and they are not able to compete with the Namul bigger. And because of this thing, we get a scale. And scale is increasing our value chain efficiency. We are able to give 80 to 85% of what we get from the consumer to the farmer and also provide very reasonable cost, affordable cost to the consumer. So competitor is not able to compete on the efficiency of our supply chain. Ms. Sori, you have mentioned to me in the past that one of the reasons that Amul was so structured and, you know, focused on efficiency was also because of the nature of your product, you know, which is milk, that you can't have any delays in collecting the milk and processing it. And, and that has made you stay one step ahead on innovation because that's been a very big focus area, especially as you grew. So I, I think that's a very important point to make because businesses are shaped and you have adapted to the the whole essence of Amul has adapted to the entire process of milk collection, right? Yeah. See, one thing is there. Milk is such a perishable commodity. So one side, whether pandemic comes, floods come, riots come, cows and buffalo won't stop. They have to continue. So you milk is coming. It's a continuous thing. So you have to collect milk twice in a day, every day. 365 days. And from 18,500 collection center across India. Now we are going outside Gujarat also. And same is the milk is such a perishable thing. You process it, but you can't keep it. You have to dispose it also. You have to market it also. You have to sell it also. Some quantity you can conserve in the shape of white butter or powder, which you can use during summer. So our whole supply chain, I mean, you said ours is a food company. I can say is basically ours is a logistic or supply chain company in food business. It's a purely managing, you see, you imagine 3.6 million farmers twice in a day, 7.2 million transaction, where each and every transaction milk is checked for the quality and quantity. From at 18,500 collections and milk is transported to 90 dairy plants and 200 chilling station through around 6,000 milk tankers. Then milk is processed and again sent to the various metro cities, dairies and other dairies, 5,000 tankers. And finished product are transported to 76 depots or warehouses across India through, through our 10,000 vans or vehicles. So this is the whole supply chain, which has been built day by one day by day. See, practically tomorrow, any you anybody can come with a huge money, but what they can build plants, they can have thousands of crores for brand building, but what they can't have overnight or in the years is backward integration with the farmers in the each village. That takes decades to build. And that is the biggest asset what Amul has. Right. 
so I am going to go back to some of these issues uh, in a bit. But before that, I want to talk a little about the history of uh, Amul. You know, as a youngster joining Amul in 1982, for instance, you would have worked very closely with Mr. Kurian. He is a, a legend. He not only created Amul, but was uh, the architect of the white revolution because this Amul model was replicated in, in different states. What, uh, what did you make of the man and his vision? And how do you think uh, uh, he transformed uh, Amul? Well, I can, uh, Dr. Varghese Korean, who is also called father of India's white revolution mid seventies. So he, he not only built Amul, but I can say Indian dairy industry. Mm -hmm. So I give you example till mid seventies, after the green revolution sixties, mid seventies, our, milk production was stagnated around 20 million metric ton. Our population was growing. After independence, milk production was around 20 and it was not growing. And day by day, our import of milk or milk products were increasing. And that time, it was decided by farmers, mm. policy makers, political leadership that we have to become self-sufficient or atom member in milk. Imagine, and that time everybody would have laughed away. How can you become atom member in milk or self-sufficient when you're importing and your population is growing, production not growing? And what was the method used? Replicating a mul model of cooperatives throughout India through National Dairy Development Board. And within 25 years, we not only became Atam Nirbhar or self sufficient but what largest produce. If I give you data, mid 70s from 20 million metric ton, today our milk production is 210 million metric ton. Per capita availability, which was only 100 gram per person per day, today even after population multiplied by two and a half, three times, our per capita availability has gone to 420 gram per person per day. And all this has happened because of model, which is nothing simple. Farmers owning the whole supply chain, right from production to the market and consumer end, so that they can get the maximum share of the whatever consumer is paying. And then same was replicated. Amul shared all his technology, all experience, and all everything. And that is why you see. In each state you go, the local cooperative is the market leader. It's a very complex structure, uh, uh, Mr. Sori. Uh, you know, and many people attribute the success of the core model in Amul to uh, uh, Mr. Korean's persistence and uh, ability uh, to uh, bring different stakeholders on the table and make them understand the importance of it. I think you're I mean, it, it goes from the political landscape uh, in Gujarat to the, uh, to the farmers, to even the fact that you have the same agency working for you since the beginning, you know? So I think that, so tell me a little about the man, you know, um, uh, we don't have, uh, you know, we can't talk to him, but through you, we would love to understand what the man was like and how you think he scripted this. Dr. Korean, I had a project to work for 31 years. I mean, I'm yet to see a person visionary like that and uh, persistence and also planning in detail. And you see, all this is okay. Any professional can have. But one thing is he had heart for the farmer's interest. See, when you are working, not for yourself, for the farmer's interest, I mean, any decision you take, any planning to you always keep in mind farmers' interest, no doubt consumer interest. And that is the reason what Amul today is. And the, you see his value system, what he had inculcated in uh, Amul, first was excellence. Anything you do, you used to say anything you do, it has to be the best in that category, whether designing building, technology, branding, people, anything. Then is the other value on which he has emphasized maximum is integrity. And he used to say, see, we are we professionals are working for the farmers who are not much educated. They have hired you, they have given you full responsibility, and they have 
full trust. So you should have people fully integrated to the values of the organization. And that is the reason after such a big organization also we are able to grow at this level. I mean, otherwise uh, the methodical planning, punctuality, I mean, any professional, I mean, you have to, you have to see having that type of value system, I don't feel. See it in today's world. I mean, what Dr. Korean has created, I mean, there's no example. You show me an example. After independence, Mahatma Gandhi has worked for the rural India, Gramin. Who else has given, contributed what Dr. Korean has contributed to the rural economy of India? You see, today, milk is 9 lakh crore per annum. Imagine if we would have not done it, like edible oil, we would have been importing around five to six lakh crore rupees dairy products every year. It's truly amazing. He was a visionary. But you know what also stands out for me is how he created a template that continues to be followed so many years after his uh, passing. Because you know, one of the things that we are looking at the shapers of enterprise is not only what were the ingredients of the success, but what allowed companies to consistently succeed over a period of time. And very often companies or, or great movements are, is about a single person. You know, it's very difficult for the second generation or the third generation or fourth generation to carry forward the essence of that. So I, I'm going to ask you about this. As now the head of Amul, how do you ensure that complacency doesn't set up? How do you ensure that this integrity is not compromised at different parts because you know it is a huge conglomerate you can keep slipping up in in parts especially when you're so widespread what are the internal checks and balances i tell you reason for this is the purity of dna of the professional people working in the organization i told you the reason for the success of our consistent manpower and that is give, resulting is to purity of DNA. I mean, our organization, the type of value system, Dr. Korean or Trivandas Patel had incul inculcated in the organization. Same is carried forward by second or third generation of the professional because when they, they entered in the Amul, they entered with the clean state. And they got 100% DNA of Dr. Korean or even the Patel, the value system, what I want, value system and culture. And we don't, we do not have a cross DNA. I mean, we don't have people from, well, they have got different value system or different definition of integrity. But let me tell you, it also depends upon the whole systems. If somebody is not, uh, you know, some organization, Integrity is there, but 20% or 30%, 40%, not like that. Dr. Kuri used to say, integrity is either yes or no. There's nothing like gray. Either, either it is there or not there. And there will be n number of examples where we have taken very harsh decision. If anything has come to our light that somebody has tried to compromise on it. Right, so give me an example of this. How do you inculcate this in the young students who come in, who or the young management trainees who've come in, who've never interacted with Mr. Korean, don't know the background of it? How do you inculcate it step by step? Because I, I'm very curious to know, because this is often been the criticism of many Indian companies that it's this Jugadu culture, it's the running behind sales, it's the managers who have a harsh sales target and they have. Uh, a, a long leash to get it done no matter how, you know? So this allows a lot of aggression on the field. I mean, how do you maintain the aggression and keep a check? One thing is there, like I said, we take people directly from the campus. So one is that thing. And then when they're inducted in the organization, three months, they're on an induction program where they're interacting with the, all the head of departments and various people. And then we have got total quality management system where we tell them on what are the pillars on which this organization is working. Total employment, uh, employee involvement, total quality management, th those types of things. 
And when they work in the field, they interact with the distributor, they interact with the I mean, supervisors, they interact with the salesmen. I mean, generally you see the culture is developed like this because you are starting from the zero. You are just after college, you are joined the organization, Amul. And when you see that this will not do, if I have not traveled in the first class, now it is, I mean, I, I can't charge it or whatever. I mean, like you mentioned, sales target, each organization targets are there, but you can't circumvent the means or procedure or the system. That is it's like a family culture. They are born professionally in Amul. So they grow with Amul with the same DNA, what their father or forefathers have got means their bosses or their bosses. As well. Right, I, as a journalist, I'm trained to be a little cynical, Mr. Sodhi. So my question is that while you can control this within the environment of Amul, how do you control it in the larger network of distributors or farmers who are supplying uh, milk to you? How do you keep the checks and balances in place? Because I don't think, I don't think you can have controls and you can uh, check it. No. It has to come from it. I mean, you, you have got hundreds of checks and control system, but today, if somebody wants to circumvent, somebody wants to come out, and I'm not saying it has not happened with us. There have been few cases where something has happened, but very harsh punishment has been given. I mean, no doubt they have been thrown out or uh, police cases have been against them. There are people like that also. But second is one, when they come here, we call all our distributor Amul Yatra to head office, all our employees. You know what we show them first three days? We take them to the villages. We show them for whom are you working? Who are your owners? When you sell a kg of butter in Delhi, where this money goes? So you are not only doing your job or you're doing your business, you are doing something for the fellow who really needs you. It's like going to the temple. You donate money, it's like that. So when you work for Amul, you are not only earning livelihood for yourself, you are also earning livelihood for some family who's totally dependent on. So something from inside comes. Right. You know, when you have worked in a company this long and in a company like Amul, you've also seen India change, Mr. Sodi, you know? You've seen a, a time when Amul was a, a monopoly, it was owned the market, then you had competition from the brands that were created by uh, the white revolution. You've had a wave of MNC companies come in, tastes have changed. Give me a sense of what your insights are, consumer insights are, about how India has changed, how India's eating habits have changed, how, how perceptions have changed. There are two things, Miniji. In food, if I tell you, you, we may be seeing a lot of change, but just think, think about your thali, what you used to eat 20 years back or 30 years back, more or less everything is same. Roti, dal, sabji, makhan, or butter, or once in a while, I think our childhood days, we used to go and eat uh, uh, South Indian. Now, people go for Mexican or Chinese or this or that. So 90% food is same, 10% keeps on changing. But what has changed is the way you buy food, the way you process food, the way you serve it. But one thing in food, which I earlier also said, consumer will never compromise is the taste. Um, but what has changed, I remember when during my 80s days when I used to go to the market, the housewife when she used to enter any shop in food or other daily things, they used to prefer, she used to prefer multinational brand. They had more trust and confidence in the multinational brand than the Indian or local. Then later on, after 20 years, I say people shifted from multinational, trust towards multinational brand to more of national brand in food. But lately I have seen consumer shift is more towards local brands because they, she feels 
Local brand is more fresh. It is meeting my taste. It is manufactured near around. And it is more affordable. So today, a national brand like Amul, you know, what is the biggest uh, area of concern? How to make Amul local food brand? How to make Amul a Punjabi brand? How to make Amul local in Urissa? How to make Amul local in Assam? That is the biggest challenge we are facing. And that is true for all the food brands. How interesting. I didn't think that. I thought, it, it you know, tastes are becoming more global and, and, and hence the focus would be on that. But what you're trying to say is that the taste of India is still very local. Local taste of India is India, but taste of Punjab is Punjab, taste of Gujarat is Gujarat. You say 5, 10, 20 percent, you may use other things. But food is such a thing, very, very difficult to, it takes decades to change this, to make a small change. And now India, I see the other thing, which I think we people may talk about nutrition, low calorie, this. But when it comes to buying or eating, I've seen people forget everything. Taste, nutrition, nutrition is an important thing. And affordability is also very important. And one more change which I have seen in food is, especially in tier two, tier three, is people have shifted from loose and unbranded to branded form or packed form. Maybe a smaller pack vis-a-vis -vis bigger cities. Are you seeing a much bigger uh, change in consumption or the bottom of the pyramid rising very fast in the consumer space and is that where a lot of the growth is going to happen going forward and is that the pricing point where you see a lot of growth happening one one change which has happened is now consumer with the prosperity coming especially in tier two tier city in the rural india consumers are upgrading themselves from mainly carbohydrate based diet to more of protein and fat which diet. So when I say protein and fat means it can be poultry, meat, dairy. Dairy meets protein and fat requirement. And that is the one change which we have seen. Uh, what was the second question you asked? It's more aspirational as they have more disposable income. So do you see a larger market coming over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I tell you, grow, we, no doubt we are growing. But the maximum growth is coming, firstly, in the markets or states which are which were hitherto not so much prosperous like uh, East, Northeast, Jharkhand, Bihar. These are states. And in each state, the smaller markets are growing much faster, right? especially the rural. I mean, we get such a good demand of uh, our pool or pack lassi, or dahi, or paneer from the rural market. You know, where we sell maximum of our beverages, uh, this uh, flavored milk, you'll be very surprised to know. We are selling maximum quantity in the states which are considered poorer. Bihar, Jharkhand, I was just on Odisha. Any shop you see, you can see Amul Cool flavored milk. I mean, this is very surprising. Oh, interesting. So you think the trickle-down impact of wealth is coming towards consumption of, of uh, higher-end uh, food products? No, I don't call it as higher-end. You may be, it's a pack, you may say it is uh, higher-end, but consumer, when they get little more money, they want to spend on food more. And food means more protein and fat, more tasty, but of very, very affordable and trustworthy brand. Right. You know, uh, Mr. Sodi, it's not as though you've not faced your, uh, your, your challenges in the journey of Amul, right? The first and the most obvious is cooperatives everywhere across India have been mired in controversy and politics, you know? There has been a run in, in Amul in the past, but you, you kind of, uh, you know, uh, crossed that uh, hurdle very quickly and got back. Uh, how is it balancing these two very, very sensitive areas of farmers and politicians? <laughs> because, you know, Amul stands in the middle of that. Has the fact that you're in Gujarat made it different? Because I remember you telling me in Gujarat, when it comes to money, 
you know, there is unanimity that everybody agrees that profit is the most important or uh, long-term growth is the most important. Tell us about that. See, what are the cooperatives? Cooperative is a union of small people. When they, and they aggregate their produce or services on a common platform and market it under a common brand or through the same platform. So it's a cooperative. So naturally, when masses are there, it's a democratic setup because elections are there. So naturally, whether on our board or in the villages, the people who are managing it, they have got political alliances. But it is up to the, your system. You have to see how much political indifference your organization, your structure can take. Because of the regular election and competition among the cooperatives to give more money to the members. See, members, it is a commercial linkage. So if a cooperative is giving me good price for the milk or my produce or my service, I'll continue to member and give my service or the product. So I've seen in our cooperative district-wise that there is a competition which district will give more price of the milk vis-a-vis -vis the adjoining district. So each board, how much politically active I am, but ultimately I have to see that my organization, my cooperative is managed well. See, now coming to your this cooperatives and politics and the here, let me also add here is, you know, central government has made a separate ministry of cooperation. And let me tell you, they have not made a separate ministry like they have got a ministry in these states where state corporate department is more job is a regulatory one. Mm. But now I think thinking has changed. Suddenly go government and a policymaker have realized that if Bharat has to develop, rural India has to develop, the best suited business model for small producers, small farmers, a small service provider is cooperative way of doing business. Hmm. What you see, what is Zomato? What is Zomato? What is Uber? They are just aggregating small people resources are produced and providing technological platform and giving to the consumer. So cooperatives are the same. Absolutely. That's a wonderful point that you have raised because you know, one would think cooperatives was a product of the 40s and 50s and 60s, you know, when you talk about the sugarcane cooperatives or you talk about the, and that is across uh, the thing. But you're saying that the new format, the new thinking is that, that the uh, Bharat will get grow only through a cooperative movement. And in that case, what is, are the lessons that you can teach from Amul? What is this, what is it from Amul, the, the a sense of Amul that can be replicated, you think? See, any cooperative today of small people, if they have to become a very successful business enterprise, four or five things are required. Mm -hmm. First is most important is leadership. Like we have Tirbundas Patel. And I have seen if there is a successful cooperative, lot of political, every political leader will be interested to be come on that helm of that cooperative. But any cooperative which is the infancy, when you need very few leaders, political leaders. Interest. So you need selfless, dedicated leadership. Second is I have seen is the technology or today in shape tech. This so that is the area they are lacking vis-a-vis -vis any of the private. Third is the seed capital. I mean, money you require money. So that is the biggest. Uh, I can say is uh, block. For the development of government. Now, with the cooperative ministry, they have got around 1,000 crore rupees for the development of new cooperatives. And fourth, I think cooperatives, if they have to become very, very successful for the not years but decade, is the emphasis on marketing and branding. Hmm. All these, you see, Amul is successful because of these things only, right? And if these four things are given to a cooperative, which I think Amul has got, or so many other cooperatives they got. We can share all these things to nurture and develop new cooperatives in any field. Generally, cooperative means, like you mentioned, either agriculture cooperative or housing cooperative 
a credit cooperative but why not a cop in a city like any city a cooperative a small restaurant fellow where they can have common food delivery system why not a cooperative security men they can have provide security services why not a cooperative of a maid servant why not a cooperative of taxi people small people india is a country of economy three s small farmer small middleman and small consumers and these three s can be only taken care by cooperative or big business and that will only develop bharat otherwise you know urban india and rural india disparities are increasing is a k type growth so how, and if you don't have jobs in the urban india what jobs you have got delivery boy security person how to provide very stable sustainable livelihood in the rural india it is going to be through cooperative way of doing business how interesting actually that that's uh, rarely do we come across the rural story as well as this so it's really i really appreciate you sharing your insights but i'm going to talk about it because you know 65% people are in rural india yeah even now uh, but you know, that, that brings me to another aspect you know uh, as india celebrates 75 years of independence how have you what is it meant i mean this this whole growth that you see the urban led uh, you know services led growth is an urban phenomena how have you seen rural india change because the problem of fragmentation of land holdings small farmers all of that persists so i know that amul does give loans to try and retain the younger generation to allow them to get into larger farms larger yeah, cattle farms yeah, yeah. to try and encourage how have you say, seen that change and what is the challenge over there because i remember you telling me that the biggest challenge that you face is that the youngsters don't want to do what their parents did and and hence you're finding it very difficult to get more farmers in that is the trend all over the world next generation of farmers or milk producers anywhere in the world you go it's not a story of india everywhere farmers next generation not interested to stay back in the villages or to produce milk or to produce wheat or paddy because let's take it is very harsh today i mean staying in the village and growing this thing with the old way is very harsh really so what we are trying to say how to make dairy a very contemporary very modern or like startups i mean why startup should be only on the laptop why startup cannot be a dairy farmer 40 cows of buffalo a way where you can earn 1 lakh rupees sitting in the village even if you are not uh, enough sufficiently uh, educated hmm. so i think what is required is uh, creating more jobs in the rural india and that is only possible looking for such a, and if i am saying dairy is because there is a market today our population is 1.38 billion it will be 1.6 or 7 billion by 2050 and the way our incomes are increasing in the urban india also demand of dairy poultry all these fisheries are going to increase many many fold and we are very competitive leave aside india in the whole of asia india is the country which we are surrounded by all defi- milk deficit countries bangladesh sri lanka pakistan middle east south east all are importing and today what you say in the war ukraine happening dairy prices have gone commodity prices have gone 30 40% our export last year was 500 crore rupees of dairy products to 50 countries this year will be 1300 crores so india is becoming very big in food export also and there is a lot of opportunity for the young entrepreneur to grow or produce that food in the rural india last question uh, mr sodi you know amul is a fantastic success and the idea or the the concept of amul has been replicated through the white revolution you know uh, very successfully but i want to ask you if there has to be five other amuls in india what needs to be done is it the ambition in thinking the confidence in knowing that you can be the best because this is what for me 
uh, is exemplified with uh, Mr. Korean's example because he had the ambition to be the best. He had the confidence that he could get the most innovative products out there. And he also had the confidence that long before the concept of branding was even known, he made Amul into a cool brand. I always say, this is a brand that you'll find in a dhaba in the roadside and in a five-star hotel wow. uh, chef's kitchen, and both are proud to host it, you know? So in that sense, I think that's a secret of Amul. So tell me, what needs to be done to replicate the success? What is the secret sauce, you think? I mean, you not only five, you can hundreds of Amul, but in India, that is a potentiality. But to replicate Amul or 100 Amul, you need not 100 Dr. Varghese Korean. You need 100 Tribhundas Patil. Selfless, dedicated, political leadership to attract, retain, motivate and protect professional leadership. So that is the one thing. Opportunities are there. I have already told you any field where small people are involved, you can have Amul. There's no problem. Because market is there, the sources are there. Only thing is how to connect with that thing. So leadership is biggest challenge or biggest roadblock, you can say. Professionals you'll get. Dr. Korean got attracted to Patel. He returned from Michigan State University after completing his post-graduation. We have a very good scale, very educated, analytical, best of the mind. I mean, Indians are professional working world over and heading the organization. So why not India? I think you've hit the nail on the head, <laughs> Mr. Soti. What we need is political leadership that inspires, political leadership that's unbiased, political leadership that's selfless, and politi political leadership that can attract the best talent back into making a difference on the ground. And I think if that has happened, that happens, you can have multiple amuls. Uh, many thanks, Mr. Sodi, for joining us today. Thank you, Miniji. Thank you very much. Thank you.